Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I go by CEO Peso. Blessed and highly favored, man. Keeping it healthy and happy. Got a motherfucking special guest. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I didn't know his background like that because I met him just as a cool ass nigga that was just shit. He had the vibes. It was dope as fuck. Shouts out to my nigga Dre shot this. He in the building too, by the way. What you go by, man? How you, how you want to you wanna introduce yourself, man? Breakfast Club, good morning. It's DJ Envy Charlemagne. Uh, In that bitch. (laughs) X, mama name me Evan. Don't matter, man. A lot of people know me as X. Yeah, I met you as X. Mama name me Evan. Whole nother motherfucker that got some shit going on. But nah, man, how you feeling though? What's popping? I cool. can't complain. Where the bottles at, man? Where the bottles? <laughs> man, <laughs> we in bottles. this Get bitch. The bottles popping. I'm good, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Nah, bro. Man. It's dope, bro. It's been a long time coming, too. It's been a long time, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in Dayton right now. You feel me? You know, yeah. I be out here a lot. He just surfed around <laughs> Dayton. Saying, getting, get, came with the party favors, may I say, man. Some nostalgic shit he say is... Is why he bought it in here, man. The first nigga to bring his own hookah in this motherfucker. You heard it. Bottle in the Bobby, back. Bobby. You know By the way, she know how to do her thing it. back there on that yeah. bottle, though. Yeah. Not a spill in sight. Hey, the best bartender. You know what I'm saying? Right. Stop playing best with me, man. Best bartender in the city, Miss Latia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, nah, man. But yeah, bro, appreciate you coming on the platform, bro. Like, you know, I'm just steady trying to build this shit up. You know, the platform just for motherfuckers this. I mean, everybody thriving, but it's just, bro, you, you know, you that guy, man. You got a lot going on, and, you know, you put a lot of lot of time and work into it. And, you know, when you working with my companion over here, he just told me y'all backstory we're going to talk about. And, oh, for sure. You know, bro, you out here really <laughs> blessing niggas and changing people's lives, though. Like, that's, that's some real shit, though, you know? Yeah. So, appreciate you on the platform, I for real, though. You, G man. shit. Appreciate um, you. One of the things Rick Ross said that I... Uh, don't tell me about the money you made. How many people have you put in position? Nah, Ooh, legitimate. That's, cool. that's a real <laughs> answer. That's a nigga that's indebted it plenty of times that know what the fuck you talking about. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, people yeah. be talking about this, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I start putting my New York accent on, man, it gets serious. Nah, me. Nah, man. Like, for real. But the, at the end of the day, man, that's what it's about, man. Like, a lot of people are selfish. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't lead this earth doing it all for you. Like, you know what I mean? It's too much it's too much money, it's too many opportunities, there's so many people to to influence and impact that uh if you just do it for you. Absolutely. I don't know if you drink or not, you know. I mean tonight <laughs> I am right tonight, <laughs> tonight I am going I'm gonna indulge. Yeah. Might as well for the occasion. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my goal. Like uh, I was just talking um with with my friend earlier about it and it's like, man, I, th- I think my passion is really so much like serving and helping people. Yeah. But I do it through music, through, you know, giving people opportunities, studio stuff um, and all of that. So, like, that's my true passion. Like, I'm, I might, you know, on the retired side, I'm going to be on some old, you know, uh, motivational speaker, you know, going yeah, yeah. around Seminars. And people how to yeah. really turn it up. You know what I'm saying? That's free game, man. Free game. Man. I've never had a problem giving out game. To yeah. me, though, like that, first off, that's longevity that comes from it when you do just have a mind state of, like, you it's more of a willing to help situation than being so selfish with it. Yeah, yeah. And until you get like to a fifty cent level to where he can be selfish all he want. Yeah. But, but other than that though, but you just putting it out there to help people therapeutically through the music, like man, that, that's why that shit always work out, bro. And not even just the music, man. With everything, like I done been a therapist, a mentor, <laughs> a counselor, all types of you know shit. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And the thing is, is like you get you actually get richer the more you help. Absolutely. You get richer, you get more. You know what I mean? When you try to keep everything to yourself, you know, you get uh you don't you don't get as much. You where you as much. where you think you uh you got that characteristic from in you? Man, that's a great question. Um I think just growing up, I always looked at like the big like the OGs and the and the big homies and some of the like just some of the heroes in our hood and uh I always was kinda like, you know, like man, like 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 they would give me game as a youngin, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. even if it was just, hey man, keep doing what you're doing, you know. Um, don't be out here doing the dumb shit with with us. Go do the raps, you know what I mean? Like go rap, man. Like the nigga, the niggas that seen something in you and wanted you to not do what they was doing. Yeah, and I thought which that probably was important. Was, yeah, which was easily probably influential at the time of just For seeing sure. whatever. 
they was doing that might have been looking intriguing in a sense. My first big opportunity was at the Wiz. I was 14. I was in high school. And at the time, I was working for a company called WRC in mm. Wanna Hills, like an urban league, like one of those, you know. And um, it was just a summer program. <clears throat> and you couldn't, like, we got paid for it. Um, and we get to go, like, to wherever we want to, like, whatever our profession was. So, obviously, I'm in music. They placed me in a radio station. Mm-hmm. And one of my first, like, mentors, technically, was Big Greg. Okay. Big Greg. Um, he's in Detroit now, but he was uh, he was pretty much a, v- a very popular uh, personnel, uh, personnel, radio host or whatever at, at the Wiz. So, first day I met him, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he he... he he kind of, he turned me up and he was just kind of like telling me like, man, you got to be confident. You rap. That's what you do. Let me hear something. And you know, I'll be shy sometimes. You can't do that. You got to be willing to, you know. So um, that was one of the first people that really like gave me a lot of game in this. So I was young, like listening to the people that was in position. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's dope to hear it too. Like the, the, the impressions people was putting on to you. Uh, and, you know, you being young, but you wasn't too, I guess, egotistical or naive to, like, mm-hmm. to ignore what they was trying to tell you or ignore, yeah. you know, because, you know, a lot of majority of people might be like, man, this nigga don't know what he's talking about, especially, like, with an elderly person that oh yeah go from, it could be either be an old head or a mentor, it's just how you choose to take in information. I don't listen to... I hate saying crackheads, but Yo, they got the best gyms, yeah. bro. They got the best <laughs> gyms. When people in the hood was laughing and saying "gone," which you know, trying to like bully a motherfucker out, mm-hmm. I'll be sitting there listening to him, like, "Damn, it's some gems in what he's saying, though." Like, he might be wired, he might be fried, but like, he's saying something though that resonate, you know. So, man, I love gang. Like, my favorite thing. I don't even in the car. I don't even listen to music. Ironically, like, I listen to YouTube. And as it relates to like those inspirational videos, we all got them Denzel, Will Smith. As so soon as you <laughs> yeah, type them Joe in, Rogan. boy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let, 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 a nice <laughs> Look, a nice little 10-minute. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm riding out what for that. What was that with the keys so behind it? What? You got to be willing to get <laughs> The, the dramatic music, yeah. though, is mad dramatic in the whip. Nah, facts. But no, I love it. I mean, that's honestly, that's the thing that kind of keep you going in this. Like, when you hear something that resonate, like, that give you the juice to, like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and they really be, it's funny because they be like, hey, you right there? <laughs> like, they be talking to you. Yeah. And then, no matter what place you at in life, like, it's a message specifically for you. Yeah, and You yeah, take yeah. it personal. Like, Hold on, man. I feel like, I feel like it's always going to be a message in some people, but it, certain shit is going to hit you when you be actually be real with yourself. Like, damn, this nigga talking about me. Yep. Because you got you to gotta be honest with yourself when it comes to that shit. Gotta be honest, man. So what? Let's uh, for the people who may not know, man, what what all, what all do you consist of as far as your your resume and talents and gifts, man? What what <laughs> what are we talking here? <laughs> I mean, producer, obviously, yeah, um, artist, songwriter, engineer, uh, studio owner, uh, entrepreneur, leave that um, out, real estate, um, uh, consultant. You know what I mean? Uh, mentor, mentor, to somebody, father. Some you know, um, but I wear a lot of hats. I wear a bunch of hats. Um, but it started with uh, being an artist first. Yeah, I was an artist first. I was rapping, and um, my cousin. I was working at McDonald's, <laughs> and my cousin, he had a studio. Like a when I say studio, I mean like a Windows desktop. And like, oh, yeah, the, the and great like speakers. The, yeah, yeah, you know, like the, the starter kit. Yeah, the, yeah, star- the I mean, starter <laughs> kit. That motherfucker, boy. But nah, I started with that. Like, he was getting out the game. I used to, I went to him to record my first song. One of the homies from the hood took me to the studio mm. f- to, to, to lay down my first record. And uh, so I think he was getting out the game. And he was just like, bro, I'll give you all this for 200 I was like, you know, shit, all right. What age was this? Uh, 14. This was about the same age. About 14. Damn. Damn. 14, That's 14 is like the age that I was like, yeah, you know I mean, but yeah, yeah, I gave him two. I went to work, I went to work, and I quit and everything. <laughs> I quit the job. I got enough money to get that. Quit the job. Start doing that, and I will record myself. And that's really how I got cold. Like I ain't never wanted to be no producer or no engineer. Yeah. I was just doing it to save money. Yeah, like, like you know yeah, I mean? like you just said, put it in your own hands, yeah, learning yeah. that shit. Yep. And then I just start figuring stuff out. You gotta think I'm recording every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so 
I just got real good at it. And then I remember I went to uh, school one day and I had, I used to bring my CDs to the school and, you know, I had little fans in high school. The glory days, man. Yeah, the man. CD days, man. <laughs> Passing joints out. All that. And one of my homies was like, man, this, like, uh, this sound good, man. Like, I'll give you $15. You let me record a song. And at the time, I ain't even know, like, I wasn't thinking was about business. the business part yeah, of it. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm just doing it. And I'm like, Nigga, I do this shit every day. Like, hell yeah, yeah. come through. Like, yeah. And then that's how it started. Mm. Like, I would make money off my friends, and I had them doing features, and they still paying me. Like, the like let's time. do a song together. Like, but it's still <laughs> right. paying for the... And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this this what I need to kind of start getting into. Like, it's turning into a business. Yeah. I had a, had a 14-year-old hands. Yeah. No, that's dope. So... Picking up on the artistry, man, um, you say you was teaching yourself everything, just being in there, you know, on the relentless grind and figuring shit out. So that's how the production came through as well, just going crazy with the engineering and just realize, to me, it seemed like just realizing everything an engineer can do when you mm -hmm. learn in that aspect. Yeah, so, like, I was still rapping, I was still engineering, and then we used to, like, I had a group... <clears throat> Um, me, Els, Kai. It's crazy because we go back, back. Like, so me, Els, Kai, a couple of other people. We had a group, and uh, we was rapping. We was called Take Money Squad. Man, everybody had them weird ass <laughs> rap group. Take Money Squad. Squad, and, uh, squad, gang, click, man. Big T's. Yeah. <laughs> Long tees. Yeah, like, yep. And we would get beats. You know what I'm saying from people, and. uh at one point, it was just like, man, you know, like, I do this shit ourselves. And opened up that FL. Boy, that FL will change your life. <laughs> hey, yo, it's changing. I mean, my nigga's that just talking about that shit. That little software, that little crack software changed lives, man. Because FL is, the, what, that's word. the, then there, everybody's joint right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Man, the first beat I made, I, it was whack to me, but everybody was like... <laughs> Bro, this shit crazy. Why, this but shit. you know what? That's why it's hard for me to like really actually accept, like not accept, but like really like, like receive. Like, man, you hard. You the gold, or you the? Because it's like for so long I've been called that. Yeah. Like you know, what I mean, I was 15, 14, 15 like doing mixes for like your crosses and blackjacks and all them. Like they was in my house in the studio and I'm making they shit sound good. They like, it's a young nigga. He don't really need much. Yeah. They keeping me in there six hours a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I've been called that for so long that it's, it's it don't like, register. It don't, I can agree to that. Cause I started out doing like, um, I was engineering and mixing. I started on acid. And acid pro. Yeah. I started on that same type of setup, but I think, I think that that praise people give us humbly saying that is because even though you might have been like not as good at all, I think everything that go around even doing it, the effort of doing that shit yeah. is what they, to me is what people was looking at. Like, damn, this nigga recording us, engineering us, mixing us and burning the CDs and shit. So I think I, I, I sit with that too, because like I was telling my nigga that like, you know, people be like, oh, you the goat or whatever. Yeah. But I can, you would never hear me say that in my mouth. Because, yeah. like you said, it, we we still just like, shit, we've been getting that for a while. And we want more. Yeah, it, uh, on our eyes. Yeah. But what the shit that we accomplished is like monumental to a lot of people. Yeah, though. yeah, it is. So I can, I can, you know, I can definitely agree to that, though. So, um, man, so even with all that, you saying that, when, that was even taking it serious. But when did it turn into like, all right, like, this is, like, the end-all, be-all, like... I mean, you had already quit your job at 14 getting equipment, but when did it transition? Oh, I like, went back. I went back. little 200 one. <laughs> Boy, I had to go back. <laughs> I would always go back for, like, two weeks and then stop again. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But, nah, mm -hmm. uh, it really got serious, honestly. Like, I would say when I graduated high school, right, mm -hmm. I was living... Uh, we was living in the Fay. Or a fair amount. And uh, I had the studio in the attic, you know, parents' house. I would get into it with my pop. They supported me, though. Let me say that. They big supported me. But I would get into it with my pops uh, about just the music, the loud music. And and really about the guests. Like, he never tripped about me doing it. But it was just like, dude, it's 9, 10 o'clock. Like, turn that mm -hmm. shit down. Like, um, And then, like, I had people coming in. And I'm trying to make a little money, you know. So... You know, parents weren't having that. Like, all these random motherfuckers. Like, you can't be doing this. So, 
I call. I remember I called my aunt. And at the time, you know, my aunt was like on the side of the family that, you know, she has, you know, nice little money, nice little living situation. She yeah. lived in Co uh, uh, Mount Airy and she lived in like these brand new condos. So um, I just told her, I'm like, look, you know, uh, my sister had died at that time. Um, I was still kind of going back to the hood and trying to hang with people and shit just wasn't really going nowhere. So I'm like, man, like I told my aunt, I'm like, I'm trying to really change my life. Not that I was like in the streets or nothing, but I wasn't doing <laughs> nothing with it though. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. wasn't doing nothing with the music fully. So I asked her, like, can I um can I come stay with you? And I know that if I'm if I stay with you, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be focused. You know what I'm saying? Cause cause of the environment. So right. when I went over there, she said you could come over here, you could put your studio in here. I got the basement, you know, you're gonna have to stay downstairs. At the time, she had her uh, her daughter in law, which is Wayne's baby mama, Sarah, and she was like, "She down there, she pregnant right now." You know what I'm saying? But y'all would get along. You know, you could you could use the storage room for the studio and sleep in there. That's a so blessing. she gave me a storage room, bro, like an old school storage room, yeah. and I had my bed in there, the studio, everything. It was, uh, That's when it turned. Like, Donda recorded. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking for that. Boot till this, I'm looking for that booth till this day. I'm gonna have to give y'all a picture to put it up or something. Yeah, absolutely. I had everybody signing a booth wall and everything. Bro, that like, that shit uh, sound like my. Yeah, that yeah, sound yeah, exactly yeah, like yeah. my shit, bro. Yeah. We had the studio. Eric, we had a wall, like a, it was a drywall. They didn't even finish it. It just turned into like, man, this sign this shit, my nigga. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. But it turned, yeah, I I, I was in, and see, the thing was, is I took it so serious. Um, So that's when I ended up, I was 19. My aunt was like, it take money to make it because I wouldn't get a job. Because I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't want no job. Like, my mind ain't for that. Yeah. She like, man, you if you want to really make some money, go get a job. You got to fund it some way, somehow. So I, I went to Amazon. And uh, I worked for about two weeks. <laughs> Got a nice little, two, you know what I mean? <laughs> the two, the two week hey, I maximum. The two weeks, boy. I would get in there and get the fuck up out of don't, there. Don't, hey, need, look, man. don't let a nigga get paid every week. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I see y'all. Like, so shit. I went in there, got my little, you know what I mean? My money, <laughs> walked out that motherfucker, <laughs> and bought hired. I, I upgraded those speakers. You know what I mean? We <laughs> were talking about earlier <laughs> to some better ones. So. You know, when I did that, I was taking it serious. Like, I went to Walmart, grabbed a receipt book. I was giving people receipts, bro. Like, it was trap street niggas. Like, the fuck I'm going to do with this? Like, yeah. But people respected the fact that I took it that serious, that I would literally write the receipt and actually keep them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and schedule people with a Google reminder. Like, before all this calendar stuff was out, it mm. was Google and, like, you know, the Gmail. And I would personally send out reminders. It wasn't no automation that I was aware of. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I would remind myself to remind the client, you have a session coming up, blah, blah, blah. And this is how my aunt's crib. My aunt would let anybody in because she believed in me that much. So, man, I had, I was, man, that dough was, it felt like the trap. Oh, so, 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 aunt provided just the comfortability in the, the, the ways for you to do it, but financially she was still on your ass of like, it's only a, it's only a, a limit to where I'm going to help you to see this shit go for you. So, so prior to that though, like, was it anything else that intrigued you that you want to do anything else? Like before, besides artistry? Nope. No sports. I like, not, well, I play, play sports. Boy, man, I play Darn. sports. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Hold on. Hold on. We got to spend two minutes on this one, boy. Hang on. But nah, like quiet as cat. I mean, it don't count technically, but I was Pee Wee. You know what I mean? I played for Western A Warriors. I was Pee Wee from uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I got to high school. <laughs> this is where it fucked up at. When I got to high school, because I played basketball, a little tournament stuff, all that. I wasn't the best. I was a decent football player, though. But um, when I got to high school, man, I remember I was going to, you know, to practice. And the coach, you know, they used they be, man, they be doing too much. But they, Evan, what the, what are you, you're late. Drop down, give me this. You know, not yelling. And I'm like, I'm looking at this motherfucker like, man, you ain't paying me nothing. Right, man. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I learned all that. I said, man, nobody. Yeah. I did what bro did on the Buccaneers. Took the whole left <laughs> right. Boy, I love all this gloves out to everybody. I'm like, I'm <laughs> out, man. I can't do this. I got to, no. Nah, you're not about to tell me all this, do all this. And, and, and I'm doing this for what? No, that wasn't my passion. But other than that, man, I ain't really had no other passion. Like, it was music or nothing. I started doing music at the age of six. Like, I was singing and rapping at six. I was doing talent shows at eight. Like, the school knew, like, 
he gonna do this song, like have him do the Nas look. I know I can be where I wanna be. He rap it. You know, I'm going out doing talent shows young, man, beatboxing. We ain't had instrumentals. My homie yeah, had the yeah. beatbox when it was his verse. It was my turn to, you know what I mean? Swap Take out. <laughs> Swap it out, cuz. Keep it what on was beat. Your, um, so what was your, like, what was your big break? Like, when you was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is it. You I had two I mean? big breaks. The first big break was when I was making money at my aunt's basement. Like, mm. she don't even know to this day I done cleared, whoa. <laughs> I was probably doing, you know, a thousand a week. Damn. In the basement. At 19 years old, a thousand a week in a basement. That's hours, no though, bro. No more Amazon needed. Man, what? That's hours, though, <laughs> yeah. bro. A thousand a week. I had the shoe box. I'm stacking. I remember. And I got used to stacking. And that's, for real, that taught me money management. Like, investing, stacking, reinvesting, stacking. Don't spend this. Don't go out nowhere. Eat some noodles today. You know what I'm saying? Like sacrifice. Get the car because the car can make you more money if you can go pick up the clients. For the clients that had to catch the bus, but you was too far. If you told them to give you an extra dub and they did four hours with you, you would go pick their ass up. Yeah, like, yeah. Get the car so you can do that. So I was, man, my big break for real came in the basement in Cincinnati, and man. I got at that point I had got, I got, I had a, a realization of like I kind of got afraid because I'm like. I'm gonna get too comfortable with this, and I know I'm I'm much more than what this city could could do for me. Like, right, right. So I I left all that money. I said I told everybody I made a decision. I said I'm going to Atlanta. I'm gonna go to the art institute. I didn't even really care to go to school, but I knew that just like everybody else, I wanted moms to at least have that. Oh, my son went to school and college. Like but mm-hmm. I'm like I'm gonna go to the art institute, but I'm really just gonna go to really get to Atlanta and network. Yeah. So I left everything like. You know, and but that was my first big break, low key, was making making money, like knowing I can make money doing this. Mm-hmm. Then the the, the uh, as far as like the big break making money in the industry was obviously the record with Lantana, the All Hustle No Luck. That was the first that placement. I had placements before that, like I had mixtapes, like I worked with FLY when they was hot. I worked with uh, mm-hmm. the Shop Boys. I worked with. DJ Unk, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this is in all like 13, in the midst of 14, when you had got to the A and was grinding it out. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, because I would come back and forth. Like, my strategy was when I went to the A, I couldn't really afford living at A. I didn't live on campus. I had to live in an apartment. I was paying 800 you know, a month for a two-bedroom apartment at, what, 20 years old and going to school. Man. So I would come to Cincinnati in the summer during breaks. And um and make a knob. Hey, I'm back, y'all. Better book me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yo, doing yo. Ta- yo. Doing specials, y'all. Hold Hit me. On. Why you can't, nigga? <laughs> hey, bro. This his story is so Same parallel, to, bro. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. Because I did the same thing, but I I left and went to full sale. I had a crazy blessing, and it was like, no. like, and that's why I was on action too. Because I know when I left. Because I had the same vibe, like, bro. I'm either gonna be stuck here or start selling dope. I was just that was like like eighty percent of my clients. So when you left, did you have, did you even have a fear of just going to a whole new territory? Hell yeah! I was like, man, I'm about to start. I ain't had no family. I ain't had no crutches. Yeah. I left in a ninety one Honda with the studio packed in that motherfucker. I, <laughs> man, I went to. I thought you can go to an apartment complex and get it the day of <laughs> like, like a hotel, nigga. I went yo, in there like I, I got, need a two bedroom. Yeah, like I got the. Hey, how much y'all want for a two bedroom? <laughs> like, hey, honey, like all right here. No, I'm sorry, sir. That's not how it works. You got to put in the application. You yeah, gotta, yeah. you know, be, and you gonna have to do a deposit. Your first credit. last you ain't month, you got no credit. Yeah, yep. yeah you are gonna have to give up another eight hundred. I was Saudi, like damn, but hell yeah, I was scared as hell. I'm like, I don't know nobody, but I let my fear push me though. Yeah, that's one thing about me. Like I ain't, I'm scared. I'm scared enough to do it. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, and that's that's anything. Like that's my motto. Like I let my fear push me towards it. Uh, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? Shit don't work. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so going down there and essentially kind of like just being a, you know, just a fresh face to them. What were some of your uh, tactics to get on your feet with the people down there in Atlanta? Great question. So I had this thing, like, <clears throat> in Cincinnati, I had this thing called Star Move. Before Timers, I had this thing called Star Move. And um, um, at the time when I was engineering, before I was really producing, I I was people would come to me. I had, like, the big names, like the Cross, the Showtimes, and all of them. 
and they would come to me and record, and they'd be like, man, X, turn this shit up, you know? And they'd call me a producer, but they didn't know. Like, I really wasn't making the beats. But I was producing, technically. I was rearranging shit. Yeah. So I'm like, man, how motherfuckers gonna really recognize me, like, as an engineer? Mm. So I used to put this tag called That's a Star Move in people's songs. That's a Star. And I remember it got to a point where motherfuckers like, man, <laughs> an artist got mad at me and was like, hey, bruh, like, what, like, you ain't put the tag in my shit. Like, he really... It was like a, some Yo, refund shit. Like, <laughs> bro, I wanted a refund because I ain't put the tag in his shit. I thought like, I was going to go completely different. Yeah. Like, yo, what is this tag in my shit? Yeah, but, nah, he was like... Because it was so popular that he mm-hmm. everybody heard it on everything. So when you go to open mics and shit... um. The whole open, it's kind of like the radio right now where the radio station, I'm all over it, you know, my tag. But like the whole entire open mic was that's a star move. So people will be like, I got to go to him. Yeah, like, yeah. So to answer your question in Atlanta, I kind of used though. I'm like, you know what? I got to be different. I got to I got to definitely network and set myself apart. So I knew I was an artist. I knew I was talented enough to do hooks and all of that stuff. So when I network, I will provide people with it. Not just a beat, but like the hook and the beat. So the song is already there for it's you. It's a structure. It was a structure. It yeah. was like all you got to do is rap. So I used that to my advantage. I used the fact that I could engineer and I had the home studio. Like I had FLY, DJ Unk. I had them niggas in the crib. I had Corey B who used to be with Hood Rich. Like I was doing Hood Rich mixtapes. People didn't even know that. I did the first Young Rich nigga uh, Migos mixtape. I met Migos before Migos t- took off. I was... I met with them for the Young Rich Nigga mixtape for them to drop the CD off to give to Corey B to say, here go all the songs, y'all do y'all thing. For Corey B to give it to me and say, I'm going to pay you, you know what I mean, a couple hundred, you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. You know what I mean? I still got them records too, but they ended up swapping some of the songs and um, re-putting it out, uh, a couple of more other songs. So, But nah, man, like I I would just... I was I was very like innovative like as far as how I approach things like Unk fucked with me DJ Unk fucked with me because when he was in the studio and instead of playing beats nigga I'm about to play this hook in this beat and when the hook go off and he realized that this ain't a song nigga this ain't a complete song whose is this yours nigga right <laughs> yeah <You know what laughs> I mean <Yeah. laughs> like, yours nigga. instantly but not nah, so but it sounds like it sounds like you uh, go ahead my bad, my bad I was gonna say too another thing is because I know producers need to hear Camera this like. Shut. Um, you got it. Producers need to hear this too. Like I would, I would definitely go to like open mics and beat battles. Beat battles was a thing that got me in Atlanta. As far like I won a beat battle before. Um, I think that's how I met FLY and got some records with them. But yeah, I would go to beat battles and I would wear my gear. Like I would have like these foam chains. My boy Roper, he 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 big now. Like he do shit for Justin Bieber, a lot of people. But he in high school we went to Art Institute, so it's a creative culture vibe. He used to make these little phone chains and he would make faces like 3D phones. Back like when that shit was popping. I remember hell. that shit. Yeah. And we would I would get my brand. I would get shirts that say I produce beats. With yeah. my motherfucking mouse walking space billboard. on the back, walking. yeah, walking billboard. So yeah, those I was man, I was out, I was doing it. Like, yeah, I mean, because when when you're back to the wall, especially in the foreign area, you know, I think that is where like this crazy ass idea. No, no idea is crazy when you're trying to get on. Oh, fact. Like everything is just like like it's a by any means type of thing for real. Mm-hmm. But um, so so we're doing all that, and then like obviously you was playing the behind the scenes first. What what gave you the mentality to not ego trip of like I'm not getting no credit for all of this shit, but I'm still just gonna do it, man. I still don't get <clears throat> a lot of credit, but that I deserve. But I don't trip about it. But as far as like what gave me that mentality of not ego tripping about the credit, that's what you asking. Yeah, yeah. Um, keeping the the end goal in mind. Like a lot of people lose sight because they focused on. The right now are they focused on like this like I play chess man so like the way I play um I'm just like everybody else but I'm 10 moves ahead not only 10 moves ahead I'm playing three four five different ways so if this don't go right I'm not worried about this you could take the queen over here I'm gonna go ahead and continue to strategize this play right here I'll forget this play and be strategizing this and distracting you from something else so I'm playing four five different ways so I never used to let like certain shit get to me like man damn like they ain't give me no itunes money for that you know i remember when um with the all hustle no luck track man like 
when, when when you know that was the first time for real the city really got like a good look and a great look. That was on uh, so, 106 and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. He was on there. He sway. Yeah, yeah. He was on a lot of shit, but like, oh, yeah, I remember that too. But I remember seeing that yeah. shit on 106. Like, our cuz yeah. from cuz from the Natty. Yeah, yeah. During yeah. that That's time, down the street, I'm like, sure. oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But during that time, right? Like when it was really time to do the paperwork and like get the business, like all right, I gotta get the lawyer. All right, we gotta talk to the label. You know, you scared as hell because you don't want the opportunity to fly. Mm. But at the same time, you hear the stories about motherfuckers getting played. You mm. know what I mean? So mm. I had a lawyer. I had a big dog. Like I had a motherfucker that negotiated for Nelly, uh, country grammar. You know what I'm saying? So I had a Jew. So um, <laughs> throw that in there real quick. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Like um, to get to the point, um. It was some discrepancies. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll pull it down a little bit. Oh, this? Oh. This part. I'll scoot over a little bit then. My bad. <clears throat> Is it like unbearably like, damn? Uh, no, but it wasn't ideal either. But it's, it's fine. Let's you, go uh, down. We did a uh, restart or? Yeah, restart. Oh, yeah, bet. Right. So um, let's pick up on uh, Got You a Jewel. Yeah. Uh, it was somebody that did Nelly stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it was some discrepancies with this All Hustle No Luck track, right? Mm. Like, I mean, it, it's going to always be that with lawyers involved. So, you know, um, the lawyer asked me some questions and he's like, all right, we know you produced it. That's fine. What else did you do? All right, I engineered it. What else did you do? I mixed it. Okay, we need you got to get credits for that. What else did you do? Did you write? Did you help? I'm like, well, yeah, I kind of pretty much wrote the hook in a sense. Like, I, I wrote at least half the hook, if not, you know, majority of the hook. Um, and the, and my lawyer was like, well, we need that writing money. And at that time, it was already like um, we was taking long with the paper. Well, we weren't taking long, but it was it took it took time back and forth for the lawyers to redline this and do this. OK, we don't want to agree to that. We, you know, and they was trying to put the record out and it was taking too long to where they was kind of like not Lantana himself, but his team, the label he was signed to at the time. were like, we're going to pull the record or we're going to get somebody to redo it. So I'm dealing with that like, damn. And, the, and, the, and my lawyer like. No, I'm fighting for writing credit. You don't just need production credit. If you wrote on it, you need writing credit. Every category. So not it's yeah. not fifty percent. It's now more. And I remember mm. telling him, "Bro, just let it go. It's cool. I don't need that. I'm cool with the production, man. We come from the same city. That's a big opportunity for us. It's bigger than me. Yep. Like fuck that writing shit. Like, and he's like, you you making a mistake. And I'm like, just do it. So that kind of answers what you were you was getting at as far as like I didn't let my ego get so much in the way of I need credit for this, credit for that. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of nigga that I'll write the song and say, man, just give me the production credit and let's just take off with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we only need one record. You know what I mean? The world to know what's what's going on when the time is right. Yeah, and that's just common courtesy of hometown love. You know what I mean? Just just putting that. Mm -hmm. So um to double back real quick though. Um, like, like you saying you was doing like the, uh, the Google calendar, the checkbooks and all of that. And you basically sound like you was just shit. One man band with a lot of shit you was doing though. But where was all that? Where, where, where did all that come from? Couldn't have came from the job you was quitting. Hell no. Nah, <laughs> like you gotta get that type of <laughs> shit. You ain't even there long enough to see, you can see how they cutting checks. Man, so. I ain't trying to be cliche, man. Like God just instilled something in me. Like it's certain lessons and like one. I'm a I was I'm a very intelligent person mm. and and I'm book smart too. Like I'm street smart and I'm book smart. So like I was one of them people in school, like I was probably more on the, the street side of like the kids as far as like the way I dress, the way I talk, the, who I know. Yeah. But like when niggas wanted to act stupid and be clowns, like I was doing work. And I, so I I've been on the honor roll since I've I've never not been on the honor roll from elementary to Junior high, never been on, not been on the honor roll. It's high school, I never had a GPA lower than three point five. I've always been uh, on the honor roll in high school, college. I've always been on the dean's list, president list. So like, she just being organized and yeah. professional, man. Like I think that came from from that. Like I would come with the folders. Like I would get my own supplies and separate and do the colors. Like this gonna be my reading green, purple gonna be the, and I'm gonna make sure everything organized and right. I'm gonna do my homework during bed. Like I was just. I think that's where it came from, for real. I've always had a passion to just go hard no matter what it was I was doing. Yeah. You know, so. And even the, um, you know, the confidence factor of, like, you just feeling like, all right, I'm about to just force feed these niggas of, like, hey, 
I wrote this hook and everything. So you you just went in there with no doubt of like just introducing like your talent beyond just engineering. Like you didn't have no doubt of like, oh man, I hope he liked this shit I wrote. Never. <laughs> and if he didn't, somebody else will. Period. Like to <laughs> Period. Sag- and to even segue into that, <clears throat> I produced this record and shout out my boy Don. He did the guitars on it. I produced this record called Blessing, right? Mm-hmm. By K Kent. And um at the time, I didn't know Kent. Kent wasn't really popping like that. He had a record, but he had a featured record, which was a big record. Um, that this before uh, Money Baby? Yeah. This was a, well, this was around that time. Yeah. But at that time, he had a record with um, Michael Montana called Do It. The girl. Oh, yeah. Uh, that shit. That was Kent. Numbers. Yeah. So Stewie was popping though at that time. He had the Shining record. Stewie was just, she was really doing his thing. And I had that little turn up sound. So, um, Oh, Stewie Rock? Stewie mm-hmm. Rock, yeah. That's yeah. who I produced for when I was in Atlanta. That's one of the, my first big, big connects. Yeah. But anyways, K. Kent was getting a feature from Stewie. And Stewie sent it to me and was like, can you mix this record? And went, hey, had nothing to do with production. The beat was done, everything. Like, But he knew. I used to mix for Stewie, too. So, mix this record. I mixed it. I liked the record. And I'm like, man, who is this dude, though? Like, he hard. Like, it was mm-hmm. K. Kent. So, uh, so, I got in touch with him. Like, hey, man, let's get some beats. You know, boom, boom, boom. So, um. So, the Blessing record, right, the way it came about, I never had K-Camp in mind because I wasn't on K-Camp's radar. I was on Stewie's ass, like, mm. pause. Like, I was like, man, everything I was doing was like, Stewie gonna kill this, kill this. We Stewie had was hella still, records. He was still on the radio, too. Man, like, all that. he was the he plug. Was, yeah. All that. So, I sent it to Stu. Stu, you know, like, that shit hard, you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, this going to be hard because it's like, it's the turn up vibe, but it's like R&B. So like the women going to love this shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I always had an R&B thing about me. But he passed. I mean, he ain't tell me he passed on it. He just, it just was one of those records he ain't really just got just into. died down a little bit. And I sent that shit to Kent because Kent would say, send me beats. Because after I mixed it, I said, let's work. He's like, come on. I had his number and everything. Like, I sent him that. Nigga, he sent me blessings the next day out of his living room. Like, mm-hmm. And I mixed it without asking him. I'm like, send me the session. He ain't know what the fuck I was about to do. I mixed that whole and everything. Made that motherfucker sound like I, I wanted this. <laughs> right. What? Executive, do this. executive produced that Don't motherfucker. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> sent it back. That shit hard. You know, so that record, my point is, is that record was for Stewie. Yeah. But what somebody else don't want and think they don't really like, guess what? It's going to be somebody else's treasure. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So. Somebody else's blessing. Yeah. What? <laughs> somebody else <I> like that. <laughs> this nigga. That was a nice drop right there. You feel me? So, um, <laughs> I, I want to ask, too, um, you know, because obviously I got introduced to you from, from my bro, Dre. But, um, because he was telling so. You had, you had tapped back in on, on being an artist in the midst of all of this shit. Yeah, yeah. I got to a point where I was tired of uh, being behind the scenes because people <laughs> wasn't giving me. I guess the ego did start kicking <laughs> in. <laughs> like that part of the career. Let yeah, me get back behind the mic yeah. and put my shit out there. Yeah. yeah. But for real, for real, I was it stemmed from I was tired of giving people everything. Like I was giving people more than what they were. They will come to the studio and pay for recording time and leave out with the package. Consultation, mentor, writing, you know, production, like a whole fucking experience, man. Just, literally, bro. Yeah. And I wasn't getting paid for that. That's artist development. Yeah, yeah. So, and then people would get mad at certain things, and I got to a point where I'm like, I'm tired of putting my like. I know I'm making money, but I'm tired of putting my energy into everybody. Like, like I need to put all this shit in myself. And people would always tell me like, I, I I did the music, but I did it more like I would be on a hook on something, right? Like people don't know this, but like I got a record with Rich the Kid. <laughs> if you look on YouTube, it's called uh, No About Nothing. It's funny. This I was working with Rich the Kid too for a minute, like before he blew up. Yeah. And uh, man, I sent Rich the Kid the hook with the beat, and this nigga said it's mine. He put Cooley on there, and uh, the dude who did No Cuffing, I forgot his name. But uh, but anyways, um, yeah, like I would, man. This shit is really, 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 really crazy how everything just be coming about, bro, like, overall. But um, I fucking lost where I was going to go with that. But uh, you was talking about Richard Kid, and then you was talking about... Him um, getting in the artistry himself. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, the we artistry, go, yeah, my bad. Yeah, go, yeah, go, so that. I would do hooks. Like, when I told, when I gave that to Richard Kid, I told him, don't put my name on there. Like, I used to hide from it. I would give somebody a hook and be like, don't tell, don't say, that's not me on there. Like, I don't want the, I, don't, I ain't trying to be an artist. I just want, I'm just here for the music. 
So after a while, it's just like people used to be like, man, bro, like you would do a hook for somebody, do the reference, tell them to do it over, and that shit don't even sound the same. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I wrote a record. One of Adrian Broner's biggest records is called uh, "On Everything," and I that was my song at first, and then I had him, I coached him to redo it. You know what I'm saying? It's still on my page. Like if you look up Young X, his videos on my actual fucking page. Like Same you know what shit. I mean? So, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, man, like. It just got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I start listening to it. And Dre, one of them people, man, like, I love Dre because Dre would always remind me, nigga, you can do this shit, bro. Like, you doing all this shit for everybody else, turning everybody else up, bro. But you hard. Like, you know, so I would just start putting that energy in myself. And I just said, fuck it. I'm not producing no more. I'm not engineering no more. I'm focusing on me. I took a hiatus. I said, fuck all the money. I'm putting all this shit in me. That's all right, so can. before I ask, before I ask you this question, Dre, um, like so, just on a on a producer's note or the the back end of it, was you getting pissed sending off your records or your stuff, and then it'd be certain shit niggas to do to your records that I was just like, what the fuck is this? All the time. <laughs> but with that, was that like was that like such a little inspiration of like well, I gotta start just doing <laughs> getting back on my shit with this shit? Kinda, yeah. I think I was just more upset about people not doing the shit with the record. Like, they'll do a record. we have a hit. Everybody like, this is a hit, man. We going to make it off this, man. The video going to be giraffes coming out. We about to have it. And I used to get gassed with it. I'm like, nigga, you don't even promote this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So Straight really, studio talk. That inspired me. And that's for real, for real. Mama Amy Evan came about really to show people how you supposed to do it. Like, let me do this shit real quick and do it how I think it should be done. Yeah. And at least leave a blueprint. Show the blueprint. Yeah. I was just thinking like, that. Because I don't really care to be a rapper or nothing, but I do care to be a fucking example. Yeah, absolutely. That's well how said. You do it. Well said. What was your introduction to bro? Whew. Um, Man, ironically, yeah, uh, I got that package. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, my brother, for real, we was looking for a studio. I'm making a long story short. He, he Googled Timeless, and um, we went up to Timeless. That he was in Atlanta at the time, but I remember he he hit us like, "Yeah, I got a studio session coming up. Y'all need something to drink. Y'all need some pop. Y'all need some." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "What kind of kind of hospitality is this?" You Shit, that experience, yeah. Nigga. That's so we, you know, what I'm saying, we go up there, boom. They tell us like, "Yeah, bro, he did blessings. He did this." And we like, "Oh, it's lit." And my bro was like, you know, still is, but like was mad talented. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? We record up there. Uh, I paid for the mix. Out of my pocket. Shout you out, Jersey. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I still listen. got that receipt. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, man, that was job money back then. You feel me? But um, I think, bro, I think you heard the record. I mean, you mix it, but you like the record as well. So you like, I'm going to be in Ohio next month, bro. Let's, let's do a session together. Yeah. You feel me? So that's when I got introduced to him was through my brother. You know, and uh, and uh, heard that story. Yo, long story short, like he ended up, you know, not doing that type of music anymore. But before he, you even go there, though, yeah, that record, right? Mm. This is crazy. <laughs> so it's, he was hard. J. Rail was hard when he was doing like you know what I mean that type shit. Oh yeah, music. I know. Like, <laughs> so they did the record. He sent it to me to mix. Right. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mixed the shit out of it. I liked it so much. I put a verse on it. Didn't tell them I was doing that. <laughs> Sent it back with the verse. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nigga. Yo, yo, take that. Take that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this ain't the remix. Yeah. Provided <laughs> like, the videographer. Shout out, uh, uh Dream. Dream. Dream Vision. I'm yeah. like, yo, we need to shoot the video there. Oh, we need to have the giraffes and bacon, like <laughs> elephants and shit. Right. Did right. the video, did the video. like video. turned it up, man. So it was live. Yeah. Bro. Go ahead, my bad. <laughs> That was fun, but um, you know what I'm saying. And at that time, also he had a record that I got to hear, 2020 Tesla with DJ J Doe. And I'm like, I had bought the camera, like I said, because of you for real, because I was paying paying everybody, bro. Hey, it's so crazy. Like- <laughs> Yo, it's so crazy the connection because I was recording rails, I was yeah. shooting rails videos, yeah. wow. yeah. but I was losing my passion to engineer and mix. Like yeah. I was, you can't pay me now to sit behind a board. Yeah, it's just dead. Yeah, but just for that shit to. Coincide, yeah, that shit's deep, it's, bro. It's wild, ain't it? So, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, um, yeah, yeah. So basically, and where was I at with it? You was uh, uh, the camera. We met, yeah, I yeah. You I got, got oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so out. boom, 2020 Tesla. I heard the record. I'm like, yo, this is live. I ended up buying the camera because I was gonna start shooting my brother's videos. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
bro dipped out. I'm like, bro, I still got this camera. So I remember I called X. I called him. I'm like, bro, listen, bro, listen. You know, I know my brother ain't doing no music no more, but bro, whenever you shoot this video, just let me come do behind the scenes pictures, videos. Well, and stuff. I'm like, I don't know yeah. what it clicked in Content. my head, but I'm like, I'm finna keep going, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think a month went by. Bro, hit me up. Like, I got a session. Come out here. I'm just like, mm, got on the highway. I'm there. Shot that mud. Send it back to him the next day. He liked it. Then he like, all right, I got a uh, concert I'm finna do. Come out here. You know what I'm saying? I shot the concert. It was the, um, it's with Lantana, uh, Cook Culture Flair. concert. Yeah, culture. Okay, boom. Gave it back to him the next day. That's when he gave me some drops on the uh, video and all that. It was live. You know what I'm saying? And then he hit me up the next day like, uh. I got a proposal for you. You feel me? <laughs> like then he ain't really boom. like yeah. fully known, man. Nah, because like, like when, when my brother was recording, I was probably just J Real's brother. You feel me? Yeah. We got our own connection off of the camera and all that. You know what I'm saying? So he like, I got a proposal for you. He like, I want you to be my videographer. He like, so go ahead and um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Study, figure out well, all the equipment you need, all the equipment you need, and uh, write a list to it and uh, send it to me. And then I'm gonna come there and buy it in tomorrow. Boy, gave, gave this nigga hell of a care package. He went in, too. Night. He was like, the Sony A7. <laughs> yeah. The nigga was up all night. Yeah. All night getting Rolling that list together. He like, is that the best Sony you can get? You're right, right. I would argue with him. Like, is it the best, though? Like, <laughs> we don't need no mediocre. You're right, right. Like, we coming through like, full throttle. For real, for lo- it, it is crazy because we we knew we, we started to know each other. We didn't know each other like that. Right. Like, for bro to come, $10,000. And just put it, put it in. And drive back off. Yep. You could have, hey, you yeah, could have ran off was, on the plug twice, was, boy. You know what once, I mean? like, shit. <laughs> Gee, shit. And it was crazy. It kept going from there. And I remember he was like, well, what, what computer are you editing with? Oh, nah, come get this MacBook. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> now, hey, you turn my nigga up. We didn't have so many conversations <laughs> about this shit. Yeah. Because I started off like, nigga. JVCs, right. flip cameras, and <laughs> nigga, the MacBook web, the <laughs> camera on the joint. They this nigga come me. through. Chauffeur oh, yeah, camera. I shoot now. <laughs> nigga, how the fuck? <laughs> nigga, I'm thinking, bro, I'm thinking anybody starting off, you got to start off at least where I was at. This nigga coming through. <laughs> Was it the joint in the church or something? Or it was, the lighting and everything was immaculate. I'm like, see that one. Yeah, I'm like, what the was, fuck? Yeah. Oh, this nigga came through with some shit, nigga. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh shit, I'm back to the drawing board. To- <laughs> That's but crazy, nah. though. I mean, it was, and it's really cousin him, like, you know, the way I like shot up so quick, cause like, bro was a perfectionist. It, y'all see the video, and they, you know, they live, but y'all don't know how many times I had to go back in on this video. Yeah, that's cool, bro, but you should do. Do, 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 I used to man, I think I, I did I persuade you to move to Cincinnati. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, bro, you need to look. I used to have this motherfucker in my room, like, bro, just yeah. be here. You can spend a night, bro. Don't yeah. worry about nothing, yeah, bro. Just I was do this right. every weekend. <laughs> and then he hit me one day, like, hey, bro, I, you know, got a roommate situation for you. <laughs> I'm gone, bro. I'm gone. So that, like, so that's what made you move down to the netty type shit. Because of him, yeah, yeah. Because you became the man down there. Oh, and that and that came afterwards. You feel me? That just you know. That um, was that consistency, though. We was always traveling, New York, everywhere. Just like, you know, as far as the Mama Name Me Evan brand and the Carlo Rossi run. But even after that, it was like... Oh, I remember that. I remember that run. I mean, I'm not just live. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Product like, placement, live, by I'm, the way. I'm, I'm right. trying to get our eyes on these videos, bro. We can probably, you feel me? So we, we started doing Carlo the videos. Carlo was the first video. Carlo, yeah. first video. We did out the wing. We ain't no shit about like Mother was like, boy dropped off the light and... I mean, how the fuck are you supposed to do this though? Nah, that's yeah. shit. What you Immaculate. To fuck it, we figured. I remember I it. it I remember. It, I think I remember it. somebody did BTS or you did. Is that when you had the bandana on or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Shit. I was studying that video. Like, how the, bro, bro, I used to send like, it to you. Like, bro, what you think about this? Bro, this is my first video. You like. Nigga, this, this shit nigga. dope. Like, <laughs> nigga, let's collab, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it, but but it was just so dope. This is see my nigga, like, like just shit, jump off the cliff with it, like, yeah. And you know, but I, cause uh, matter of fact, the first studio was down by that little construction site, right? Yeah. Yep. Cause I remember going out there for a whole session. I'm like, why is this shit so ducked off? Like, it's on some weird shit. I'm, uh-huh. But walking that motherfucker, I'm like, oh, this is the. You had the, the picture and everything back yeah, there. Yeah, it was circulating. Yeah. Cause you was doing like mad pictures, like everything you was promoting bro, the fuck out of that yeah. shit too. I mean, it was all team bro. based though. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was about Jersey. Like at the end of the day, that's another thing too. Like when you a boss or you a leader or whatever it is, you the forefront. You have to know how to put people in position. And I never was selfish with that shit. Like, like honestly, man, the mama named me Evan. When it, when the visual part came. To be a buck with you, bro, that was a marketing strategy. We were shooting commercials, bro. 
to be able to build Dre. And yeah. I told, I remember I had this, I don't know if it's on video, but I remember, I think it is. I was telling people, like, he about to be the next, or probably was a Facebook post. I'm like, mark my words. Like, y'all motherfuckers may not know him, because he from Dayton, you know what I mean? He ain't from Cincy, so he don't, I'm like, man, he gonna be the hardest motherfucker out here. Watch, everybody gonna be on his ass. We Everything was, like, behind Dre. And we was using Mama Name Me Evan as the forefront to turn up the video. Like, we was, like, Dre wasn't charging, obviously, for the videos, but mm-hmm. I looked at it like, well, let's, Use the money that I probably would have tried to pay you. If I was going to pay you a thousand to do the video, let's put the thousand towards budgeting for to make the video look as good as possible. So we would rent lights mm-hmm. or rent a cr- rent another crew to handle lights. Make and a store in the video. Make it, yeah, yeah like yeah. <laughs> take that shit back. Amazon. You know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> like, right. but, but the goal in mind was for everybody to grow in that. Like, it wasn't really about Mama Name Me Evan. It was about the brand. Yeah, the like, branding. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could we all grow? So, like, at the end of the day, when Mama Name Me Evan say, hey, man, or when he fall back or shit ain't working, like, bro got a branch. He got an mm-hmm. olive branch. You know what I mean? So, you constructed that whole run y'all did. I remember the cardboard cutouts, like, everything. People walking with the yeah, signs. Like, it, yeah, y'all went in on wow, that motherfucker. Man. But you constructed all of that shit, like, just... You ever had a manager? <laughs> I mean, for real, myself, like, but I do have a team. Like, I did have a team. Like, one thing I can say is I didn't do this on my own. Uh, I facilitated my team. I knew who, I knew the strengths of everybody else, and I brought everybody together and said, this is what you do. You promote? All right, promote this. You do video? Okay, do the videos for this. You know, um, you to connect for that. Like, I put everybody together. You the DJ? All right, let's do a record. I'm going to make your, like the Tesla, that was my song at first, technically. Here, bro, you take this shit. Do you like the record that much? Nigga, it's your single. Yeah. Let's do split sheets. You ain't got to write a lyric, but I'm going to give you 50% of the record. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's turn this shit up. Like, everybody can win, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, we did everything. We had mascots. Again, it was a blueprint. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was a blueprint to show everybody. That's how you promote. I did commercials like I would do my own commercials to play on the Wiz. And we would just play the single, but we would like advertise the shit and then had a single plan for the next, you know, 45 seconds. And um, we would do commercials. I mean, we we had a lot of a lot of people come to me and they ask me how to do certain shit um, because I do understand the business aspect of the industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. But yeah, man. And then um, you know, we can't I mean we we spoke on the studio, but I wanna tap into that too real quick. Even um the the choice of opening that, you know, and pushing that along, like, was that a difficulty or was it I mean, cause you already just had the name you had built of being an engineer, but just going full fledged into the building, like how was that process? Scary. Um I remember, like, <clears throat> I used to freelance. So, like, say, you know, we in this studio. So, I I come to you and say, hey, look, I'm in Atlanta, you know, but I, and I come out here, like, I'm going to rent the studio. Like, how much you pay a month here? Like, you might say 600 a month. All right, I'm going to pay you half. You know what I'm saying? Just give me access. I don't need your equipment or nothing. I'm going to bring my shit, and I'm going um, to use the studio. So, like, the first time getting my own rent lease commercial yeah. lease like and knowing like this my shit and I have to build it um it was scary because at the time I'm like I'm not gonna just like with Drizzy like I, I didn't want to we not about to start from like the bottom with the video shit if we believe in this shit and you really believe in this shit we about to get the, the, the top notch shit yeah, go in you know what I'm saying so uh it was scary I remember I was talking to one of my uh at the time, she was like a mentor, and we had a meeting. Me and my partner, Cam, we had a meeting with her, and she was kind of like, she used to work <clears throat> with uh, high tech. So, uh, that people don't know this, too, but tech, tech, I used to work with tech, and uh, tech was a mentor to me. He still is. He, he was, High tech was a mentor to me, and uh, he wanted to... Uh, he, he wanted to sign me, you know, as a songwriter, producer, engineer at the time, but uh, I, I ended up going to Atlanta instead. Yeah. But anyways... Um, she kind of let me know, like she was, she was managing the studio. So she knew like the ins and outs of a real actual industry studio. She was like, 
you want to do what? I'm like, I want to do a state-of-the-art studio here in Cincinnati. I don't think it's never been done outside of tech. And I want to be this generation. I'm a young nigga, and I want to. I want motherfuckers to feel like they don't got to go to L.A. and Atlanta to see some live-ass shit. Yeah. And she like, that's the, she ain't say that's the dumbest thing, but she kind of just told me, like, this ain't the market. Far-fetched. Like, ain't nobody going to pay what you need. Like, this studio with tech, even though he don't let everybody in his shit, motherfucker, like, it's a, you know, it's not, it's not a, you're not about to eat off these twenty dollar an hour motherfuckers, like. Right. And I said, I don't even care. Again, back to serving and helping. It's not for the money. It's not even for me. It's to show people that we can have this here. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was scary, man. I had to dump a lot of money. Like every dollar I made off all oh, hustle, no luck. Every dollar I made off of the hours of studio time. When motherfuckers say they got that shit out the mud, like I really got it out the mud. Every dollar that I saved, I put into the studio into that timeless studio to build it from scratch and um that shit was scary bro you know what i mean it really was i ain't gonna hold you it was scary you talking about a nigga that's putting up 60 70 thousand dollars at the age of 23 yeah. with a son and not so knowing it i don't have yeah. no sense of business like on my own right everywhere i was at the rent was paid just do it. Yeah. I just had to pay for equipment. This time I got to not only pay for, I got a lease to, I have to uphold on top of that. I got to get the right equipment to, to show shit. And I got to staff people. Like I got to pay my staff. Like, yeah. A real you know business. I mean? like, like a real you. I didn't eat for two years, bro. Like I had people, I did it the right way. Like I employed people. I had a receptionist. I had all that. I was paying people by the hour. But we ain't even had sessions coming in. Yeah. And I would take the cut and not eat just to be able to know that I'm doing, I'm structuring this the right way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that shit was scary, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, nah. It's, it's, it's information needed to hear. Um, So... Cause we're gonna wrap up real quick too. But um and before we do, I got a couple oh. of questions I want to get off my chest. Oh, you go say, ahead, hey, go look, ahead. Like, I but know that you think let's camera check real quick. All right. So the first question is for both of y'all. It's an either or question. All right. Um now would you rather have five hundred thousand now, guaranteed, or flip a coin for five million? Shit. <clears throat> <laughs> I flip a coin. You flip the coin? Yeah. Knowing that if it hit tails, you don't get nothing. Yeah. I'm, I already don't got it. I feel that. <laughs> what about you? 500000 guaranteed now. Or flip the coin, what I say, for $5 million. I'm going to take the half chicken and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, Six, like great success Massive success Does not come without Great risk So I get the flipping Of the coin mm -hmm. But see in my mind I don't mind the slow I've been slow grinding My whole life So I know what it's like To have five dollars To your name To turn that five Into fifty That fifty Into five hundred Five hundred To five thousand Five thousand yeah. To fifty thousand Fifty to five hundred thousand so if you're gonna give me five hundred thousand, my motto gonna stay the same. I'm gonna get that five million. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I'm gonna take my chances and I'm gonna go with the five hundred and I'm gonna I'm gonna invest it because if you don't get that, when you flip that, you got fifty percent chance, right? Mm. If you don't get that five million, like some people being they be greedy. Like they gamble, they be greedy. Sometimes you just gotta know how to take that dollar and make it work. Cause you can't make shit work without nothing. You back in, you back at at point A trying to figure it out. Yep. And that, and those, are, I'm not saying that. No disrespect to the answer, but like yeah. people who gamble in a sense of my chances of winning this, um, it's so much harder to like. What do you do then if you don't get that? What do you do? I can make five hundred work. If I made five dollars work, I'm gonna make five hundred thousand work. Mm. So I'm going with the five, and I'm gonna trust and believe. If it take me three years, 
You know what I'm saying? You gonna be like, damn, you got five million. You know where it came from, my nigga. Yeah, you got five hundred. You got. I guess, I guess mine is just more like what's meant for me gonna be me anyways. Period. So, you gonna make the yeah. Yeah. So it's already like the bro just basically saying I got five hundred <laughs> right now. I ain't tripping. <laughs> it's, like, just, I ain't. <laughs> it's, it's it's coming either way, regardless though. Like you said, whether it's tomorrow or three years. It's coming. Look how it's much. It's still a win, regardless, though. But look, look how much niggas then did already to get where they at. So nice. it's like, nigga, I'm comfortable either way. Period. But that 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 half a chicken would work though. But I ain't, I ain't, we gonna you know leave that out. Nah. All right. Ahead. So these next four questions is geared towards Evan. Mm. These hot, these, these hot seat questions. <laughs> so much so that if you choose not to answer it, you owe me a dollar per question. This thing on some drink champs. Go yeah. Ahead. We just get you the five now, four now. <laughs> type shit. Right. Right. Yeah, let's go. All right, if you don't want to answer it, though, you got to cash at me later, bet. Say last. <clears throat> All right, so one of these never happened. Evan the rapper or Evan the producer? Sheesh. Never happened, though. Hold on. Let me get this straight. So if you only I, had one career. I can answer the question. You can answer the okay, question. Okay, there ain't yeah. no right or wrong. Ain't no right or wrong. As long as I answer. Yeah, but if you don't answer, you owe me a dollar. Say it again. All right, one of these never happened. Evan the rapper or Evan the artist... Mm, or Evan, the, the producer. producer. Evan, uh, artist. All right, all right. One of these never happened. Lantana's All Hustle, No Luck. Or K Kemp Blessings. Damn, boy. <laughs> if you don't want to answer it, you got to give me a dollar. He held on to them bucks. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Damn, man. Shout out my nigga Land, man. That's my baby. Hey, listen, Land. <laughs> It's just, it's just a game. <laughs> you know what, though? The real me going to say blessing never happened because at the end of the day, all hustle, no luck is 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 bigger than me mm-hmm. and him. It was for the city. Yeah, and even if I got to leave this earth and know that we did something together that we came from nothing, I'll take that. I'll take the little chump change compared to the big dollars any day for that particular situation. <laughs> all right. I hate to do this one to you, Rev. I- I got to get a dollar out you, brother. What meant more to you? Working on Jamie Shay's Detoxic or Toy Helene's Delusional? Sheesh. <laughs> hey, what's the cash out, bro? <laughs> nah, uh, nah, I'm going to answer. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> he know I'm gonna get cussed out anyway. That's what I'm, saying. Oh, that's, I just, I'm sorry, uh, ladies. I just want a dollar. I'm trying to read the comments de- after this, man. <laughs> Detoxic meant more to me only because she truly allowed me to executive produce that album. I was I was more involved with Jamie Shay's album as opposed to just recording Tori and mixing Tori. She already had everything. She came to the mm-hmm. table with me and Jamie. Actually, sat. And draw it out the drew out the whole entire plan and worked like for days to come up with that album. So that was I was involved. So that meant more to me because I was more a part of that project. All right, that's fair enough, man. I ain't gonna get no. But Tori, we right. cool. All right, don't cuss me. <laughs> last, last question. It's just all right. As an artist, label cuts you a check with a budget of thirty thousand dollars for a music video. Who you get to shoot it? Oh, who the fuck I'm gonna get to shoot this nigga? Dre shoot this shit, nigga. Hey, shit. Man, well, Come on. He answered man. the questions pretty goddamn well. Yeah, he did, <laughs> he bro. Did. He got up out of that without oh, giving bro. up a buck. That's how you okay. know he's so an that's entrepreneur. How Dre shot this with oh, the high seat, goddamn it. Hey, man, yeah, <laughs> nah, nah. But <laughs> well, um, but yeah, man, so uh what, what else you got coming up, man? Like what what what's the future hold? Does it matter? You ain't gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know the shit what the past hold. Hell, nigga. <laughs> <That is. laughs> Hey, I looked at this nigga hey, eye. I looked at him in his eye with that answer. Hey, it hit me. I'm like, does it matter? I'm like, this nigga going up on me right now. Like, God damn. Nah, no. In all serious, there's no um man, sky's the limit. You know, um, real estate definitely, you know, I've been tapping into that a lot. Uh, so I definitely see like um land, um, you know, the the uh, Tyler Perry of Cincinnati creating something here for all creatives. Um, that's going to take things to another level. Mm-hmm. So real estate with that, more businesses um, outside of myself, man, like really putting other people in position like my team. I got six engineers. Um, you know, we got marketing, we got, 
you know, um, management, con- uh, consultant stuff, video stuff, um, timeless films. Um, so I see a just a conglomerate of just success in the media, music business, or industry. So more of that, a lot more um, just giving people a platform to like really have a voice and and uh, showcase their music. We got events um, January 29th. Plug. Uh, we got the plug Go and play. If you haven't been to a plug and play, you need to be there. Uh, plug and play is pretty much just an opportunity for people to come there, play their music. Uh, we used to play videos in there to promote Dre man. on purpose. We used to play the Mama Marketing. Nelly videos. Yeah, yeah. So come there, play your music, man. So just more stuff like that to like really bring back to the city, the community. Um, you might see a timeless in date, and who knows? You know what I mean? Um, man, expansion, but yeah. expanding, like you know. So uh, I'm in Atlanta right now, definitely working on Timeless South, and uh, yeah, just growing, just just growing, really. Like soon it'll be a label. Uh, but but yeah, it's more success. Don't don't man. I um like I said, bro. Um, I don't think I said it on cam yet, but I met you just as such as just a thoroughbred, like cool nigga, yeah, homie. Like even we ran into each other in the airport. It was just oh, yeah, love yeah, and yeah. shit. You feel me? For and sure. it just like since day one when I met you, you know, it was dope. Like even in a we we've been trying to correlate, shoot, like you know, helping each other out. Yeah, so. Yeah. You know, just to know more about you on, you know, on on a personal level with it and, the, you know, doing on my platform. I appreciate yeah. it, though. I appreciate you, man. I used to, Dre would talk about you before I met you, and he idolized you, you know, um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Not but, you know, he used to tell me about you, and uh, he you was one of the people that, you know, I used to ask, I think I came to Dayton one time for a show, and I think you were there, and he was like, "That's the dude, like he the nigga out here, like that's the mother." We, you know what I mean? I'm trying mm-hmm. to get like, and um, he always bigs you up. So I'm one thing I want to say is, is I'm proud of this because like you don't see enough of this, right? Yeah. You do videos, you do videos, y'all technically are 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 fighting for the same client in a sense, right? Yeah. Um, but y'all find a way to work together. And to bring more to the table and leave all the ego, all the pride, all the I'm better than you, nigga, you need to come fuck with me. Don't <laughs> fuck with him. Like, nigga, spend that 10 thou with me. You know, and the fact that y'all brought this shit together to make it bigger, I commend you without even having to know you and, and sit pina coladas on the beach with you and know your story. Yeah. I, can, I, I automatically um, relate and resonate with you on a whole nother level. And I appreciate you for being the person you are to uh to still reach back out and give back give knowledge to people and even having this platform it's very important man that's the only way we're gonna be able to really keep keep building and keep going we work so we we isolate ourselves from each other we try to compete um but when when you see two big entities coming together to build something yeah like on some Black Wall Street shit, like that's that's what's important, man. So I commend you for being uh, humble shit. and grounded enough to uh, to 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 allow room for for people to uh, to work with you. Yeah, and I build mean, something bigger. It, well, it it never even. I mean, that's always been homie from day one. He know that, and, and honestly though, it, it when when I got a taste of leaving the city and I actually started doing my thing in like so many different places. And then he was doing this thing, like we built up our names and like kind of like different markets. Yeah. So when we came back here, it was just like we started quarterbacking shit. Like, yeah. hey, you trying to shoot this shit, or I'm about to go out of town or whatever. So it just the way it just meshed together, it just was like, bro, it's no way, bro, it can be competition in no type of way. Like, it's just always love. That's and real. the similarities, like I peep me and you got from our back history of how we came up. You know, it's it, it it just makes sense, man. Like it's really one of them not not to be cliche, but great minds thinking like for sure. Like you know, it's all going people gonna end up in the same room for the right reasons if it makes sense. Point blank. And I think I think it came perfect because I didn't have this platform like a year ago, and right. And it's, this is bringing more attraction for me to end to be able to just put my brand out there. So point blank. Period. And, and, yeah. and on camera, I want to be able to say like, man to man, face to face. Like I'm proud of you, Dre. Like we had a lot of. Late night conversations, man, over the Waffle House, man. you know, uh, spending the night, 
figuring this shit out, struggling. Hey, my yeah. nigga, like, I ain't got it, bro. Like, yeah. I ain't got it either, nigga. Like, we need to figure some shit out. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of you, bro, because, like, um, like I don't want, I always used to tell you, and I still mean this, I don't want nothing from you. Like, no matter, and you, you know, you would always big me up and you would always tell people, you know, like, X the reason. That's, and I always, I will always re, re remind you to say, nah, like, nigga, you did that. You showed up. Yeah. You showed up to the culture concert with the nice. camera that you had to say, I'm here, I'm doing it. And off that, off the strength, bro, that was the only reason I'm like, I have to put my energy into you. And even if I don't get to benefit from you financially in the long run, I benefit from knowing that I had an influence. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you did. You you took that and you still ran with it. Like people That's don't right. understand the behind the scenes of like what goes on. Like outside of Dre, outside of X, outside of Peso, outside of who y'all know and who y'all see in the success, we struggle with shit, man. man. We have mental issues. We have Boy. depression. We have children. We, we have children. <laughs> man, relationship like issues, yeah, yeah. like financial issues. Like don't let none of this shit. Don't twist none of this shit. Like, we struggle, man. We go through it. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you for keeping it going, bro, because we had a lot of talks about man. giving up, man. Man. And, and and I'm proud to know, like, when, when I hear your name, like, that ain't me. Like, when I hear your name get brought up, and, 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 and that ain't me. I'm proud to be able to say, man, you worked for that, bro. Nah, that's so I'm proud of you, that. man. For real, bro. I appreciate I'm proud that. of you, man. Jeez, I'm proud. Shit. I yeah. appreciate you coming to pay for that mix. I'm glad I was able to get to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nah, real talk. Like, shit. for real, I'm glad to be able to say that I know you. You know what I mean? Oh, so man. Flowers, flowers being given. Right. Yeah, <laughs> while we still here, man. But yeah, man, um, like I said, I appreciate you. Um, This is Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Y'all keep on dreaming. We out this bitch. Get it. Dreamers Welcome Podcast.